Uh, hello, we're talking today about chapter 11 in the book. It's a t chapter entitled, or the topic will be coupled homogeneous reactions. And in this chapter, what we're going to do is explore the relationship between the electron transfer process and chemical reactions that often accompany electron transfers. And we're going to concentrate on cyclic voltammetry. Now, that shouldn't suggest to you that, that, that cyclic voltammetry and chemical reactions are the only time we have to worry about things. So, uh, we'll always have chemical reactions occurring in every technique, chronoapparometry, bulk electrolysis, constant current methods, uh, potentiometry type methods, but uh, we really have no chance to cover all of those ideas. So we'll use cyclic voltammetry as a proxy because it also, it's also a very useful technique for exploring uh, especially qualitatively the chemical reaction process and you can get a lot of information by looking at the cyclic voltammograms as a function of scan rate uh, with the chemical reactions as occurring. So we'll talk about that and then you can use that as a jumping off point for your own studies if you need to. Let's, uh, there's all, all kinds of uh, people, articles written about chemical reactions with, uh, with electron transfer. And there's a pretty good book. And a lot of those reactions are organic reactions. In other words, they're involving organic chemicals that are involved in electron transfer. But uh, more and more, especially in the last 10, 15 years, uh, inorganic and organometallic type researchers are using electrochemistry as a, as a tool. And so you'll see a lot of papers discussing that. In fact, the topic the paper to, to discuss today is an organometallic type paper. Uh, there is a book by a guy named Fry um, that is on organic electrochemistry. And in this case, he's not so much interested in exact mechanisms or rate constants, but he is interested in synthetic organic electrochemistry and how we can understand uh, some of the chemical transformations you see in synthetic organic chemistry can be explained by normal electrochemical methods. But we're going to use that and you can, you can look at that book if you think it's important. Now what we're going to do is talk about uh, two types of things. One is we'll have a notation E and that's going to be the electron transfer step. And we have C, which is our chemical step. And that chemical step can be any of all any kind of chemical step it can be a, a bond breaking, could be bond making, could be an equilibrium step, and so on. So we'll use subscripts on those E's and C's to indicate other things that are going on. Now the simplest reaction that we talked about plus before is the reduction of say species A to B and so that would be notated an E step. If B undergoes a chemical reaction to C, we'd call that an E step. Depending on the rate constant, we might use a subscripts I Q and R for the E step to indicate irreversible quasi-reversible and reversible. And those refer strictly to the electron transfer process. And again, those only are applicable to certain time scales. As you all know by now, by changing the time scale of the reaction, we can change something from a, a irreversible to perhaps quasi-reversible or something from reversible to quasi-reversibility by, say, changing the scan rate to faster values. And we'll see similar subscripts for the C reaction as well. We can have reversible chemical reactions. We can have irreversible chemical reactions. We can have equilibrium processes with the C step. Let's take a, a particular um, a particular case first. Uh, starting out with a compound paraaminophenol. That's a this can be oxidized 
you know, the two electron process to give us a quinone amine, so called quinone amine. And you see that we've lost uh, one hydrogen off the amine group and we've lost one hydrogen off the phenol group. And so we've lost, um, we'd actually end up with a hydrogen as a byproduct. Or more likely um, two protons, I should say. If you add some, if water is present in the system, you can undergo a chemical reaction in which water adds to that system, forming now a quinone. That would be a para benzoquinone plus ammonia. So here we see uh, EC reaction. There's an electrochemical step, electrochemical electron transfer step, and a chemical step. And that chemical step is essentially irreversible. We don't expect the ammonia and the quinone to, re, uh, to rearrange back into the quinone amine. This is a, a fairly unstable <laughs> material in the presence of even small amounts of water will undergo that reaction. So we might call this uh, CI to indicate irreversibility. So we'll have subscripts, as I said, E sub R, E sub Q, E sub irreversible, E sub I, I should say. And we can have C sub R, C sub I, and sometimes C sub EQ. We use A and B to indicate usually rever uh, electron transfer susceptible species, in other words, species that can undergo electron transfers, and we'll use W, X, Y, and Z to indicate non-electroactive species in the system. Let's talk about some different types.